Prince Harry and Meghan Markle hope for a year of redemption after challenging 2023 with a couple eyeing up a move to LA because the Duchess is popular in Hollywood, a source apparently has revealed. But Prince Harry and Meghan Markle believe 2024 will be a year of redemption for them. And they may even move to Los Angeles because Meghan is so popular in Hollywood, sources close to us have revealed. Now, their hope for next year came after they suffered a number of setbacks, including the scrapping of their Spotify contract early and one of the film's bosses calling them lazy and grifters. Now, they were apparently screwed by South Park and Family Guy, named among the biggest losers of the year by the Hollywood Reporter, and just last uh, in a week, they were revealed a 8.7 million euro for. Uh, you know, in the nations to their actual foundation. Now, PR experts also believe that Omid Scobie's book, uh, Endgame and the Rings Roll, it, uh, you know, spat was also a disaster for the sassists who apparently failed to condemn it. But sources close to the couple also have reportedly in Costa Rica have said in American media that Harry and Meghan think that 2024 will be a year of redemption with Meghan, apparently also turning down offers uh, you know, of work left, right and center, and Harry also in extremely high demand. Now, U.S. Weekly uh, claims that the Duke and Duchess are considering moving with uh, Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet and, of course, about 14.7 million equivalent to 11.6 million um, on the Cinto Mansion to Los Angeles so they can apparently be closer to Hollywood. An insider told US Weekly, saying, they've actually been shocked by uh, how popular she, uh, that's Megan, is. Her team has never seen anything like that. That's this perception that Harry and Megan have been snapped in the entertainment industry. By the way, they see it, they're choosing quality over quantity instead of grabbing every opportunity that comes their way. Now, Megan is less of focus on their foundation, and Harry also has a year until the next uh, Invictus game in Canada. A second source denied claims recently that uh, her new talent agency, WME, may be considering dropping her after just six months. The insider said that Megan is working on a big major deal. Megan walked the red carpet at the Power of Women Gala in Los Angeles last month and said, They have so many exciting things on the slate, Arden. I can't wait until we can announce them. But I'm just really proud of what we're creating. My husband is loving it too, which is really fun. US Weekly claims that Harry still has so much more to say, but it won't be in another book like Spam. Harry and Meghan want uh, to go in a different direction. They apparently have said that they needed to say uh, with regard to the royals. They're moving on, the sources apparently also said. Well, Meghan is currently less focused on the actual foundation, the, uh, you know, but there is also a TV and film office on the table, which rumors around this suit lingering is about to pop up about this too. But she is 100% more interested in directing and being uh, behind the cameras, one source apparently said. Now, Mio Line has asked the South uh, spokesperson about this, but looks like the PR experts have apparently also taken more negative view uh, you know, of your prospect and say that she apparently hopes for the better for them this uh, 2024. Well, guys, if you do ask me, I think, well, I don't know, but let's hope for the best or the better for this uh, you know, a uh, couple, and of course, May 2024 be a good year for them. What do you think about it? Live it inside. Okay, I'm gonna give you the truth, the real tea about why Meghan Markle dresses in neutrals. I'm making this video because of comments I've seen. I have to manually moderate any video about Meghan Markle. Comment filters are not enough. There are so many people just looking to hate on her. And a lot of people do this, not just by treating Meghan Markle like she's not a person, but by deliberately misunderstanding things she said in the past. I don't think this specific commenter was doing that, but there were a lot of comments like this. Some of them just downright mean-spirited that I did delete because they were unnecessary. Because yes, Meghan Markle is continuing her neutral streak in a beige Proenza schooler dress that she wore to the Variety Power of Women event in LA. But Meghan Markle wearing a neutral dress is not an opportunity to gotcha her. And here's why. What people mean when they say, well, didn't she complain about having to wear neutral? Or didn't she say that the royal family forced her to wear neutrals? What we're talking about is 
is a section from the Harry and Meghan Netflix documentary where she said she rarely wore color when she was within the royal family. Very different right off the bat from I could only wear neutrals. So many people refuse to listen to Meghan's actual words, so we're gonna read them together. Most of the time when I was in the UK, most of the time, not all of the time, I rarely wore color. There was thought in that. To my understanding, you could never wear the same color as Her Majesty, but you should also not be wearing the same color as one of the other more senior members of the family. So I was like, what's a color they'll probably never wear? Camel, beige, white? She wore neutral colors so that she could blend in, but she did that of her own volition. And that speaks to something that a lot of people don't want to acknowledge about Meghan Markle, is that she's incredibly thoughtful and she is not a narcissist. She's not power hungry. She is not grabbing the spotlight whenever she can. She says, I was not trying to stand out. There's no version of me joining this family and trying not to do everything I could to fit in. I didn't want to embarrass them. There's another part in the documentary where there was a group royal family event. I think it was at the Royal Albert Hall and every single senior royal was in attendance, but who was on the papers the next day? Meghan. And she was absolutely mortified. And Prince Harry was the one who explained to her like, yeah, this is, this is what the papers do. Meghan took it upon herself to put herself in neutrals, in colors that would blend in as much as possible. And she later said that when she knew that she and Harry were not going to be working royals going forward, during what we now call the Sussex farewell tour, she decided to throw that out the window. Obviously that strategy of blending in and wearing neutrals was not enough to help Meghan integrate into the royal family. So it literally sounds like she said, screw it, let's just look like a rainbow. That's her verbatim quote. And that's where you get these three outfits. Not the only time she wore color, but a very memorable stretch of standing out. But nowhere did she say, has she ever said that the royal family was so mean and forced her to wear neutral colors. And people deliberately misunderstanding this still is a symptom of the dehumanization that Meghan has been subjected to. I actually love that she's wearing neutrals now, even though she's no longer a working member of the royal family. She is still a member of the family and she is still a duchess. Sorry, not sorry. But dressing like this years after it's been a consideration to blend in and not clash or cause conflict, it has to be so empowering for her to wear neutral colors and to look this good doing it while she's in an era where she can fully let herself shine. The only way you can have a problem with that is if you are irrationally angry about Meghan Markle's existence. Do you know what bugs me the most about Meghan Markle? The entitlement. This girl is the worst example of laziness and entitlement I've ever heard. Ooh, mm -mm. Meghan Markle graduated from Northwestern University, one of the most prestigious universities in the US of A. She then, of course, moved to Los Angeles to pursue acting, where she had many small roles, as many actors start out doing, including the suitcase girl on Deal or No Deal, which is very impressive considering then she went on to work as a series regular in the very hit show Suits, playing Rachel Zane for 108 episodes. And for those of you who don't know, being a series regular means you shoot an episode a week. It's about eight days. Your salary is about 45 grand minimum, and you're working 12 to 15 hours a day, which is very, very impressive. Not to mention she was shooting in Toronto, so away from her friends and family. She then had a plethora of other roles from that point on. She of course had her website The Tig and was involved heavily in philanthropy throughout acting. She then of course went on to date very publicly Prince Harry where she was publicly scrutinized and then she married the prince and she had two beautiful children in which she carried both. Lived over across the pond for some time. Again, where she was very publicly scrutinized. Again, she was mothering two kids. Meghan and Harry's Archetypes Foundation has worked tirelessly in lifting up many, many marginalized groups, which is not lazy and or selfish. She's been a global ambassador for clean water, an advocate for mental health, championing women's voices and stories, subjected to very, very dark thoughts, which we saw in the Harry and Meghan Netflix documentary when the press was scrutinizing her. So yes, her Archetypes podcast may not have worked out, but she has done a plethora of good work to help other people and that is not lazy or in time.